Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Well, I know things look a little different. It's because we're out in the garage, and uh, I wanted to start on my project that I've been putting off. And uh, back during the end of the summer, I picked up a 2003 Mustang convertible, and it's got to have a little work to it. But the uh, main thing that's keeping the car from being drivable is the transmission. Transmission works in reverse, but had no forward gears. Uh, it doesn't even move. However, when you jack the back of the uh, car up, put it in drive, you do have movement of the tire, but uh, it will not pull off on its own weight. So what this is, this is the uh, AODE series family of transmissions and this is the 4R70W and like I say it came out of a 2003 Mustang it has a 3.8 high performance V6 engine so uh, what I wanted to do is uh, go ahead and tear this thing down and do an inspection of it see what the failure was what caused it so we got to do a little detective work and then uh, after we find out everything that it needs, I'll get the parts ordered and we'll put this thing back together. Now a lot of you say, well buddy, this ain't electronics. Well you know AODE is automatic overdrive electronic. So you can think of a transmission. Now a lot of people get scared when they think of you know going through a transmission. You know, but honestly, it is a very sophisticated piece of equipment. But it's not as bad as you think it is. Uh, transmission has a lot of circuits in it. has a mechanical diode. Uh, several pistons. Uh, it's just, you know, and a hydraulic device. And there's a lot of parts of it that are controlled electrically. So what we're going to do is get this thing tore down and inspect it and find out just what happened and uh, why it has no forward gears. First thing we want to do is go ahead and uh, roll the transmission over on its top. I'm going to block up the other side. Go ahead and get the pan off, drain out any other fluid that's in it. Uh, we can look down at the valve body area and see if uh, what we can find now I've already tried to take the position sensor off but there's some rust around here so I'm going to worry about taking that off once I get everything else stripped away from it I'm going to get this whole lever and shaft out at one time so I can work on getting this off you have to be very careful because you don't want to break this uh, sensor and we don't want to break the uh, speed control either so just be very careful when you're doing this. I'm going to get the transmission turned over and blocked up and then we can uh, get the pan off. Okay, all the uh, bolts are out of the pan. So, uh, we have a screwdriver. I'm going to go ahead and get the pan off. And you can see just how filthy that is on the inside now this pan does have the rubber metal clad gasket on it and the good thing about those if you want to you can reuse them there is a magnet here as you can see and it's going to catch all the sludge but one thing that you want to do is look and see if you see any metal bits around this magnet the 4 R70W does have a few failure points and sometimes some bits will break off and you'll find them around the magnet. I'm not seeing anything here like that. So we'll go ahead and set the uh, pan over on the bench. Now we'll mess with transmissions to be uh, prepared to get dirty. And uh, there's a lot of transmission fluid in it. It's dripping transmission fluid. Even after draining it, it still has 
quite a bit of fluid in the system. And we'll take the filter and pop it off. And yeah, you can see it's full of fluid. Next thing we want to do is uh, take the valve body off. But to do that, we need to remove this wiring harness. See, one end goes to the uh, case connector. The other end, then it plugs into the uh, shift solenoids. Then it comes over here to another circuit and plugs in, which is, I think, the uh, torque converter clutch solenoid so we're going to have to uh, pop this uh, harness off And there's like 32 bolts here but all we're interested in taking off is the 8 millimeter bolts the 10 millimeter bolts holds this separator plate onto the valve body and I have the long socket on here Over here is a uh, eight mm bolt with a spring and a roller on it, and this is your uh, detent lever that holds your uh, shifter in the correct position. There's another bracket over here that you'll need to take off once you uh, pull the bolt out. And I believe that is all of the 8mm bolts. Alright, now you should be able to grab the valve body. Lift it straight up. And we don't have to worry about nothing uh, falling out. Sometimes this filter will come out with the uh, valve body. Don't worry about that. And we just want to take this and set it right over there in the, the uh, pan. Okay, I need to get some of this oil out of here. That'll be cleaned up a little bit. Then we're going to start taking a look at these uh, servos and accumulators. Okay, we'll go ahead and remove our tail shaft. There's six bolts around at 13 millimeter. Alright, what we want to do is go ahead and remove our shift lever. I'm going to use a big screwdriver to put between the uh, shaft and the pork and paw rod and then take like a 13 sixteenths and loosen that nut up
down though it's loose but right here we have a little roll pin you can see it sticking up right there we got to get that out so then we can pull the shaft out There we go, we pull that right out. Make sure you put that in a box. Now we can pull our shaft off. You can see our sensor is still on it, so I got to soak that and get that broken or loose. shift rod and parking pole out. Get a nut. Stand there. A pin here in the back. spring on it. Make sure you don't lose that. Now we'll pull our EPC out. Now we work on getting our servos and accumulators out. Take the case connector, push it straight up, comes right out. We'll use a little pick. We'll go down here to our one to two. Take it out the uh, cover, take the spring out. Sometimes you can use some uh, snap ring pliers to reach right in there and squeeze it and pull that piston right out for the one to two. Go ahead and take our two to three accumulator out. There's a snap ring in there and there is uh, a little bit of pressure on this. So when you go to take it out, let it go blind. Pull it out with a snap ring. Take the spring out. Pull our piston out. And there's one more spring in the bottom. And then what we got to do is take out the uh, overdrive servo and the reverse servo. And to do that, we're going to use this homemade tool. This is about the only specialty tools you really need. And uh, this is just made out of a piece of three-quarter tubing with holes drilled in it and uh, a T-handle. And what you're going to do is press the uh, servo down and then we can get the... Uh, snap ring out and let it back up. That is another good thing about working on this particular type of transmission. There's no really anything special that you got to have to uh, get the job done.
Okay, I'll show what it's down. Get in there and get the uh, snap rings on. Now, a lot of time in these 4R70W, this particular snap ring will break and you'll find that these hooks break off <laughs> and they'll go right out this port over here and end up in the valve body and causes the uh, valve to hang open so always replace that snap ring and if the uh, piston come right up And all I'm using is just the uh, same bolts that hold the valve body. You hear the uh, band down there when I uh, pulled it to. A lot of times this C clip here will break too. This is one of the weakest links in the uh, 4R70. Now we'll do the uh, reverse server the same way. Let's see if I use different size holes for it. You'll get transmission fluid everywhere. Let that worry you. And this sort of bug will take it out with a uh, small screwdriver. Of course, that snap ring. Always wear eye protection. I got this sword in there. Snap wings can shatter, go flying. I don't want to take out no eye. Snap rings out. See it's got hooks so you can get up underneath of it and uh, pry it out with a screwdriver right there. And that is all of the valve water area. Now the next thing to do is get the uh, front pump out and. Uh, Start disassembling the transmission. I think first I'm going to clean up some oil. What I want to do now is go ahead and move the uh, front pump pump out. There is uh, seven 10 millimeter bolts in here holding it on. We'll go ahead and rip those right out.
Now if you look in here, you'll see two of the bolt holes has metric threads in it. And that's so you can screw a bolt into and uh, use a slide hammer to uh, work this pump out. But it does have an O-ring, a gasket behind it. So it gets a little tough. We've still got some transmission fluid in there running out. So be expected to deal with that. So instead of using my slide hammer, I just screwed two bolts in it. Took a claw hammer, put it in there and just give them a couple of tugs and the pump come right loose. No problems. So we can uh, pull the pump out. See the uh, pump, the case gasket is still on there and also make sure that this brush washer comes out with it. And then we can just set that on the bench. Okay guys, since we've got the valve body area off and all those components around it and we got the pump pulled, I went ahead and washed the case out with some uh, mineral spirits and that's just so that there's not so much fluid all over everything when we're, you know, trying to video it. It'll keep it a little bit cleaner this way. won't be so much of a mess so located right here is a dampener spring and we're just going to reach in with a pick and pull it out you see that's just a little silencer is all it is and, and what it is when the uh, mechanical dough kicks in it keeps these plates and stuff in here from chunking and making so much noise next we're going to move the intermediate clutches should be four steels four frictions your first plate is going to be a steel we have a clutch and another steel coming out they're still kind of stuck together you can see uh, this immediate clutch looks good. I don't see no problems with it. It's still got plenty of material on it. Doesn't look burnt, but it's going to get replaced anyway. Um, we're not going to save any of the clutches. This also is, you know, second gear clutch. Okay, and pull out the clutch and the steel together. Pick works real good for reaching in and pulling these out. And one more clutch this here. Sometimes they can be a little sticky getting out. I will say all of them do look look good. Steels are not burnt. These could be reused, but we're not. Now, here is the end plate. Just gonna reach in and pull it out. You can see the end plate's kind of thick. It's got a bevel on this end. And we're just gonna put these right on the back of the pump just like they came out. Already got the uh, case to pump gasket out. Next thing we need to do is uh, remove this overdrive band. This end here is going to be up against these pins, anchor pins. And looking at the overdrive band, it too is not in too bad a shape. There's a little bit of black right here in the center, but uh, it would have lasted quite a few more miles. It will get replaced. 
but it's not in as bad a shape as I thought it would be in. Well, this is the input shaft and connected to it is going to be the mechanical diode, the reverse and the forward drum. And all we should be able to do is just grab it and pull it straight out. And we'll set it on the bench. Just how it came out. Now right here is going to be the uh, forward clutch hub. And uh, there's a couple of thrush washers in it. some light down on there a little bit better for you we're just going to reach in pull it out and you see both thrush washers came out with it they're still stuck together we'll need to inspect these and inspect this hub Next we're going to reach down, we're going to grab the intermediate shaft and just pull it straight out. Alright, we're going to reach in now and pull out the uh, drive shell. Try to do this with both hands. Gear try to come out with it. And there's all sun gear. Now right here is a snap ring around here that holds this center support in. And just reach in. I'm gonna use a pick. get it started it's actually in the wrong spot okay it's got uh, two clips on each side on this particular model now we should be able to reach in and pull out that uh, All right. I think the reason why that center support was so hard to pull out is a case silencer and uh, what it does when you put the vehicle in drive and that reverse it keeps that from slamming around in there making noise it had actually uh, probably when I had the transmission on the side pulling the pump out everything went forward a little bit so it probably come loose and it had dropped down in there and that's what caused the uh, some support so hard to pull out it was still wedging in there and I couldn't see it so we'll put that over in the uh, box now what we want to do is reach down here and pull out this uh, planetary drive okay what we want to do now is reach down and pull out this planetary drive and it's always best if you use two hands and you'll be able to pull that right out and you can see this has a one-way clutch roller clutch on top of it do not turn this over because you don't want this to fall out but uh, you can see that's the uh, planet gears there's another snap ring down here that kind of acts like a shell for that uh, reverse fan it'll just come right out
Now we can uh, get all the voice band out. And it is in excellent condition. There's hardly no wear at all on this. It's not black, not burnt. We may reuse this. These, I do not find them bad because, you know, it's only used in reverse, so it's not like it's being, you know, ran all the time in the vehicle. The only thing left to pull out is the output shaft and ring gear along with the direct clutch. I don't know if I can pull it out this way. Now we can pull out the uh, direct clutch pack. Let me see if I can get this one. Yep, I sure can. There's the output shaft and ring gear. And the last thing in there is going to be a flush washer. That's the uh, output shaft to case thrush washer. And as you can see, that's it. The transmission is empty. Nothing else left to pull out of it. Okay, as you can see, I laid all the parts on the bench. Basically the way that they came out. Pump. Ordinary reverse drum input shaft, drive shell, planetary center support, direct drive clutch pack, and the ring gear and output shaft. And um, that kind of keeps it, you know, gives you a, a road map of how things come out. Now this is, you know, again where everybody gets so worried about transmission repair. If you do it in this way, you're not working on a lot of parts at one time. So the first thing we're going to do is drive the grab the uh, direct clutch pack, and we're going to sit it over here on another bench and tear it apart and uh, inspect it to see just how bad it is. Okay, so we got the direct clutch pack sitting here, and you can see just. Uh, how black this is I mean it is really black and right there is friction disc material go ahead and pop the snap ring out by sticking a screwdriver under it and we're just going to lay that on the bench the way it come out and then we're going to take the uh, pack and turn it over and everything will come out in your hand. You got a uh, thrust spacer and thrust washer to come out. And your thick end plate. Got a clutch disc. you can see that thing is gone there's even spots in it where the uh, friction material was missing got another plate you can see the edges of the plate are burnt black oh boy Now there's a friction disc that is in terrible shape. You can see right here, there's no friction material left on it. It's just a disc and it's, it rubs right off. Yeah, that thing was really burnt. This one has no friction material left on it all, but a little bit around the, uh, the edge of it here. Both sides are like that. Completely blown up. 
transmission of the hard life. You know, there's another one, same way, everything off the back side of it is gone, all but right around the center of it. And there's a little spot here and here that has material. Yeah, drum just over here. All materials present on that one, but uh, it's really wore down. Now this one, you can see it still has the lines in it, and it's not hardly wore at all. Sounds to me like something was binding up in this direct clutch pack. We'll have to get all this cleaned up and see exactly what happens. But I guarantee you that uh, this piston in here has failed. I do believe that's what has happened. That plate, that was one more in there, and it was completely wedged in place. Yep, that one was froze completely in place. Alright, so now we got to get the uh, piston out so we can get all this inspected and see just what's going on here. We'll go ahead and remove this brush washer and the uh, spacer. And we can carry it over to the press and get the uh, piston out. Alright, to get this out, there's a snap ring around here, and what we got to do is press this spring pack down, then we can remove that snap ring. We just got a uh, two, three and a half inch piece of the square metal welded to a tube. We'll simply uh, Put it right on the uh, spring cage. Now we can press it down. We'll see if this pair of snap ring pliers will do it. There we go. Whenever you're working with these, uh, be very careful. Make sure you have safety glasses on. Because these snap rings can shatter and shrapnel will go flying or it can pop off and hit you right now or somewhere. So just be very careful taking these off. Yep, everything should come up just fine. Now we can uh, take our snap ring out. Remove our spring cage. Make sure none of those springs are broken. That clutch is frozen in place. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's really in bad shape. 
you can see uh, right here there's the uh, lip seal is actually out has blown out around part of the uh, piston okay so normally what you would do is uh, turn this over and there's two ports here in the back you plug off one and blow air into the other one and force this piston out however when I tried that it did not budge wouldn't move what I finally had to end up doing was taking an exacto knife and going around the edge to cut the uh, seal out and then take needle nose pliers and work it until I finally got it to come loose and uh, I think you can see how the uh, seal has just uh, melted right into the hub or the drum in this case. The seal is almost like a, uh, a gooey rubber mess and it is completely stuck to the inside of that shell and that is what's left of that seal now most of the time when you're taking these apart you would take the seals off and clean up all the parts and put everything back together and uh, lay the old seals with the part put it back on the shelf grab the next part then when you go to uh, rebuild that one section you can use the old seal to uh, you know as a template for which seal in, the, in your rebuild pack to use uh, not much using this old seal for anything so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh, get in here and clean this real good and see if I can get all that old rubber off and uh, check that board make sure nothing is damaged the inner lip seal I believe it is free and not stuck I believe I can get it off without any problems reach in and pinch it and we can get a pick under it now see this lip seal looks like it's supposed to it's not damaged and it's pliable it don't feel gooey so this seal didn't uh, get a lot of damage but that one is gone <laughs> it is uh, just melted away you can see the uh, yeah, you can feel the rubber where it's impregnated on the uh, side of the piston so I'll get this in the porch washer and get it cleaned up check ball still present and uh, probably use some light um, scotch bright to uh, clean this up with I believe it'll be okay I went ahead and cleaned up the uh, old clutch pack just mainly so uh, you can see what's going on with it a little snap ring our end plate there's one clutch disc there's one next steel now this clutch disc there is no friction material left on it as you can see on either side this has 
just you know the only things left is the steel inner just a little bit of friction material here some around the edge a little bit around the edge there so yeah it was uh extremely heated that one's the same way just a little bit of friction material around the inside surprisingly the steels are not warped hardly no clutch material left on that all the friction is gone both sides just around the edge This one has friction on it, but you can see it's coming off in different places. But the last friction is completely wore down. There's no lines left in it. There's still friction material on it. This side is hardly worn at all. And then the uh, last steel. All right, we'll take this part and set it aside. So the next part we're going to look at is the four and reverse drums. We'll take the uh, reverse drum carrier. Set it aside. Get a small screwdriver in here. And move the snap in. Take our end plate out. And here's all our clutches. And as you can see, the reverse clutches are just like new. Is the end plate but yeah the reverse clutches have no problems whatsoever with them they are in perfect condition they will be replaced though if you turn the transmission apart and working on it, it's always good just to go ahead and replace everything there's another snap ring down here in the bottom That's a wavy snap ring. Then there's a Belleville washer. A lot of times you'll find these cracked. This one looks in good shape. If you look at it, you can see it's beveled. It's like a dish. The inner section of it points downwards or towards the uh, clutch hub. a little ring in here and a ply ring see if we can get that uh, clutch to pop out putting some air pressure on it put your finger over the back hole has a square cut seal on the uh, outside and the inside and neither one of these seals are damaged we'll just sit clutch this back in we 
way out with pyrene back in this groove. Get a real washer back in there. rings and our O-rings and we'll return that to the bench. That'll go in the parts washer next. Okay we'll grab the forward clutch pack. Take our bearing off. Drop that down in our hole. snap ring you can look at this and tell how black it is Got an end plate burnt black Clutch this black and steel. Yep, these clutches are are gone. That one's just pure metal. There's nothing left on it. Put it completely black. You can see that last steel is just burnt black. See how black they are. Alright, we'll have to drop this in the press. Press this ring down. Remove the snap ring. And we can get the uh, disc out of it. And that one's out. So, clutch back aside. And we move this retainer. Make a plastic and we'll set it there. You're seeing this exactly how I'm seeing it. Not much left to the O ring. There's a uh, melted rubber around the inside of this. Inner seal out. Yep, and it's heat damaged also. I don't think I have ever seen one this bad as far as being damaged from heat where it melted the O rings. piston will not even go back down to its bore because there's so much uh, melted rubber in there. Ok, 
Okay, we're going to get our pump up here. I've already uh, broke these bolts loose. And we'll go ahead and get this out and remove the stator. See how our Inside. Hopefully it's salvageable with all the other problems in this transmission from heat damage. I'm really amazed at, uh, how good a shape some of the uh, parts that normally fail are in. Go ahead and remove this spring cage. There's little lips around the bottom here. Just give them a little little pry up. spring cage all nine springs are there and present none broken have a clutch square cut o-rings look good not damaged Stayed her out. Clean off around the uh, face of it. And you want to look at this area here for any wearing, gouges, scratches. This one looks just like a new one. center gear it looks completely fine no problem with the outer gear again it looks fine And the inside of the board looks good. The uh, bearing looks good. I see no uh, wear, no gouging or wire on the bearing. So that looks fine also. Okay guys, uh, video is getting a little bit long so we're probably going to work on disassembling the valve body in another video because uh, that is the brain of everything. So uh, we'll probably just devote a, a video on tearing it down and rebuilding it and putting it back together at one time. But, you know, one of the main things when you get your transmission out, the first thing people want to do is take the transmission and pressure wash it with high pressure. Do not do that. Uh, if it's real dirty, just wipe it down. Come in, disassemble your transmission. Once you get everything out of the case, it is all right then to take the case, the pan, and the tail stock out and pressure wash it. Do not pressure wash it when it's together. Water will destroy electronics like the uh, position sensor. Yes, seal, but, but high pressure water can get into it and cause it to damage. Also, you don't want to uh, use water on machine parts. Uh, aluminum it's not going to hurt it you can clean it up pretty good with no problems uh, when it does come to cleaning up your internal parts if you don't have a parts washer a five gallon bucket 
couple of gallons of uh, odorless mineral spirits. It's all I use. I don't use uh, any petroleum stuff like diesel fuel, kerosene, or Warsaw or anything. I uh, always use mineral spirits to clean. It works to me. The you know the best is the best thing to use for cleaning internal parts. Clean them, blow them dry, set them aside. Now, if you are going to let um, machine surfaces sit in a shop that's not environmentally controlled, you might want to put a little oil on those surfaces just to keep them from flash rusting. Also, if you're using a parts washer, again, I recommend mineral spirits over water-based solvents because flash rust can occur. Now, I did want to go ahead and point out this failure that I'm seeing here. But this is the mechanical diode, and it's on the back of the uh, reverse drum. Actually, it's on the front of it because this is the first thing you see once uh, you pull the pump in the transmission. Now, the job of this diode is to turn clockwise and uh, no turn clockwise. This one. It will not turn either way. It is uh, completely stuck and does not move. Uh, you cannot take these apart. They are completely sealed and once one has became locked up the only thing you can do is replace it. Now we're seeing all the problems that this transmission has showed us. We got a frozen mechanical diode our direct drum our clutch plates are completely ruined from heat the o-rings are melted into the the shell the forward drum clutch packs are completely gone and melted o-rings so there's three things in this transmission that that we see is wrong with it now all the other things that I uh, you would normally see like the overdrive band burn up the uh, overdrive cylinder bore in the transmission here being wore out this one is perfect it is not worn at all the pin is tight and you know those little things that you would see the snap rings won't broken so that's good they will be replaced so it all comes down to transmission fluid now transmission fluid has three main jobs inside a transmission one is to lubricate two is to provide hydraulic pressure for the needed systems that's activated from the valve body and servos accumulators and so forth its third job is to remove hot fluid um, the fluid you know is all around all the parts the heat is absorbed into the fluids it comes out the port goes through your vehicle cooling system and then returns back into another port as cooler fluid and it looks like all that has failed in this transmission now it could be that uh, the radiator core is stopped up you're not getting much flow through the uh, input and output or it could be that the transmission was run extremely low on fluid for a long period of time but uh, <laughs> it's just you know telling me it does direct that that there was a fluid issue and that has caused this transmission to fail
one thing that really got my attention is this transmission has 150,000 miles on it and I can tell you the fluid has never been changed when Ford built this transmission they installed this plug into the dipstick tube as this transmission goes on down the line before the dip when the dipstick tube is put in it's pressed in this piece falls into the pan and sits in the pan until someone finally gets the car and later on so many miles down the road changes the fluid this is usually took out discarded it was still in the pan of the transmission so I would say this transmission has never seen service so she's had a hard life <laughs> and uh, it's amazing that this is in a good shape that it is but I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, parts ordered we know exactly what we need um, we know uh, where we're gonna get the parts from and then in the next video we'll get the valve body cleaned down and rebuilt and then we'll do a video on reassembling everything and testing it to make sure everything is right before we put it back together anyway I hope this uh, provided you with some information help you learn a little bit about uh, transmissions there's no need of knowing what exactly everything in the valve body does uh, it's just it's nice information to know but it's, it's not it's not needed you do not know to know, need to know that you just need to know the parts how they work how they you know should perform and how to uh, reinstall everything anyway until the next video guys we'll catch you then bye now